Good morning, happy Monday or afternoon or evening, depending on whenever you watch this video. I realize I, whenever I say good morning on these videos, it's morning when I'm recording it. But when you're watching it, who knows when it will be. So today we're going to be talking about the new Nile album that came out this past Friday, uh, whatever day that was. I, I don't even know what today is. Today is the 26th of August. Nile came out on the 23rd of August, 2024. Uh, it's, it's, it's Monday morning. It's early. I'm tired. I had a, a busy long weekend. So excuse me if I seem a little unenthusiastic this morning. Uh, I still need to wake up, but I'm trying to get the video out before I start my work day because I know I'm not gonna be able to record one later tonight. So, uh, yeah, this came in on Saturday. The underworld awaits us all. Uh, this is now currently out on Napalm Records. They are now on Napalm Records. This is their, what, their, their ninth? Three, six, seven, eight, tenth, tenth full length album. So let's talk about the album. And then I've got some other records to show you from Nile. Uh, I don't know if I've ever shown them off on here. I can't remember if I ever, if I ever did. They're all reissues that Relapse has put out the, over the last couple of years. Um, these are the only Nile vinyl I own. I own a lot of their other albums on CD as well. Maybe I'll do a Nile ranking someday. I do credit this band being one of my favorite death metal bands, technical, they're pretty technical too, technical death metal bands. Um, they're one of my favorite death metal bands, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but uh, yeah, they're from the US, as you guys know. I think they're primarily out of South Carolina. I don't remember if that's the case. I feel like that is. Um, and in the past, they've been on Relapse and Nuclear Blast, and now they're on Napalm, which is a nice change. I like Napalm Records. They they make quality pressings and they put out some good music and lately they've been putting out a lot of new releases that I've enjoyed. So um, I settled for just a classic black copy because it was quite a bit cheaper than the colored and I am fine with just classic black. A nice gatefold album here. So here is the cover. Here is the gatefold which is just liner notes and then Another image, and then here's the back image. Two vinyl, classic black, uh, printed inner sheets with just the liner notes and lyrics. Um, my only complaint about this is that, holy shit, these, look how tiny that is. That font is tiny as hell, and I don't know if they would have maybe uh, been better off just making a booklet with all of the lyrics, but they went this route, so whatever. Um, and then again, just classic black, I'm not going to bother pulling out the records. Um, so... This album, I am gonna be honest with you. I was excited it was coming out. I will be. I will admit that I was excited it was coming out, but also didn't have like super high expectations or didn't have like a hope that it would be so much better than their last, um, which came out in 2019. Sorry, I'm trying to see who the artist was for this, and I feel like again these liner notes are so goddamn small. Um, cover artwork is done by, uh, Michael Lawrence or Lawrence Lawrence. Um, it looks similar to Apollo Girardi, uh, cover art, which is why I was looking. But anyway, the last album, Vile, uh, Nihilotic, Nihilotic, I can never say that for some reason, Rights came out in 2019. I liked that album. I thought it was good. Probably, um, better than, I liked it better than What Should Be on Earth and... That's probably my least favorite uh, Nile album. Um, that and then probably Those Whom the Gods Detest. I've just never, for some reason, those two albums have just never really done much for me. Uh, I like them, but they're just not as good as other ones. Um, I like I like the last album. I, to be honest with you, I don't remember the last time I listened to it. I listened to it this week because I, I was doing a Nile binge because I knew the new album was coming. Um, it didn't really stand out with as being like memorable or anything like that. Uh, it was just consistent, and Nile's a consistently good death metal band. They have a very good discography. Uh, they have a recipe that is their own, and, and they do it well. Um, but this one definitely is way better than their last. Um, I was very happy with the way this sounded. I was honestly a little bit surprised at how heavy this was. And just abrasive and, and just super in your face. Um, sometimes Nile has a little bit more of that slower paced death metal that's just crushingly heavy. Um, 
and then obviously the the more technical riffs that they throw in there but every once in a while they have a little bit of a slower pace to their songs this one is just like full speed ahead full sale aggression and i mean the last album was similar but this the sound of this is crisper sounding the production is way better um the musical writing is a little bit more intricate which is funny to say because they're a pretty intricate writing band they write pretty technical riffs uh but this one seems to be like they it seems like they have a little bit more of a passion with this album whereas the other one felt stale at some times at, at some at some points like some points within the album have got a little bit repetitive and boring and stale i don't know if it was since might be their last album on nuclear blast maybe they were burnt out even though there were several years i went in between uh their last album um i don't know i don't know what the what the difference was with that album just something about the last album did not seem like energized that's the word that i'm looking for and this one feels very energetic very energetic like they are back it's almost like they're making a statement that they're coming back even though they were never gone at all like nile is by far one of the best death metal bands in the scene i think they're the, one of the most legendary i honestly feel like they get kind of underrated and people don't think about them sometimes and they don't put them in that list they're too busy thinking about you know cannibal corpse and and deicide and death and you know all those big heavy hitters and then i almost feel like now doesn't get thrown into that category as much as they should yeah i mean it's technical death metal not everybody likes technical death metal that doesn't always sit well with them they don't always digest it um, but they do it in a way that it's not so in like so brain mush um, and it's just so heavy and crushing and just they write phenomenal music I'm, I'm a big fan of that I love this band um, and I absolutely love this album I did not expect to like it as much as I did I for some reason thought it was just going to be much of the same as our last album uh, but they that staleness now feels gone I mean the first song um Stelay of Vultures <laughs> God forbid I'd be able to read anything um is phenomenal I mean it that pretty much starts the the album out right away like you know exactly what you're getting with this album and like I said it's got an aggression to it that I feel like wasn't on their last like two albums uh it's like got this energetic speedness sounding to it like crisper sounds um I feel like saying, I feel, keep saying crisp. I don't know if that's the right word. Just the production is very, very good on this. It's very well, it's very well produced and everything is mixed very well. Uh, and the vocals on this, like Carl is just a madman. His vocals are so crazy on this. And they have vocal variances where there's other backing vocals on here. There's even guest vocalists on here. Um, there is a, a woman vocalist on a couple of songs where she just does like that this like howling like back track on it and it's so good um i'm blanking on the songs i did not write any notes for this i just turned the camera on i was like you know let's 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 do this off the cuff here uh because uh you guys you know you know how i you know how i roll uh but it is it is a very good album i feel like for me to say that and then for you to just be like okay like reviews are very subjective obviously um i you gotta listen to it to to form your own opinion. Um, but a lot of people are asking me, you know, what do I think about it? Do I have it? Do I have a record show off? Like, yes, I do. Um, the only thing I don't like about this album, I do have one criticism and it's very, very nitpicky, uh, is the second track, which was a single, the first single they put off chapter for not being human upside down on a stake in the underworld and made to eat feces by the four apes. This track uh, is, you know, Nile has always been a little bit goofy. They've always had a sense of humor in their music. I, I, that does not, has not passed me. Like, I know that, obviously. This song, you hear the word feces in it the whole, throughout the whole entire song. Uh, and it's very prominent. Um, it's a bit of a goofy song. Uh, and it kind of drives me nuts. I'm not going to lie. I just, I can't unhear the feces song, unfortunately. Um, 
and I know people are probably like laughing and like, I get it. You know, it's, there's a funniness to it, but I just don't, I don't want a death metal song about feces in, in my repertoire right now. Uh, just not in the mood for that, for the heck goofiness. Um, so that's kind of the only thing that I don't like about this album. The song is good. Um, that's what kind of led me to be like, what is going on? <laughs> what is this album going to be? Cause it's, that was the first single, but it's heavy. It's got awesome riffs on it. I like, again, Carl's vocals on here. He's a man, man. He sounds phenomenal after all these years, amazing guitar writing, the drumming, is, drumming and the bass, like just everything is so in sync. It sounds so good. Uh, however, the feces stuff, man, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Just not a big, not a big fan of it. Um, so yeah, that's really my only criticism. I would say the first track is six minutes long. That is a long song to put as a first track to start off the album, but it's pretty, it's pretty like, again, it's a really good song. It's pretty epic. It gets in your face and like, you just know exactly what you're getting yourselves into. I mean, and then the, the last half of this album the D side, since it's a double LP, um, true gods of the desert, the underworld awaits us all. And then lament of the destruction of time. Um, three of the best songs on this album. Like this, this, this album is really, really good. Uh, there's not really anything that I would say needs to be cut off. No fat needs to be trimmed on this. Um, with the exception of, of maybe, the fact that it's 53 minutes long, that's not too long. It's 11 songs, 53 minutes. Like, there really is no fat trimming on this. I don't feel like there's any filler songs at all. I could see maybe some people who are not as familiar with Nile or just don't really, I don't know, m might blend a little bit of the songs or start to feel like that they sound a little bit of the same. Um, to me, that I don't feel like that at all. They each have their own standout. Like I said, there's amazing riffs. There's a lot of, like, that... Nile atmosphere that they bring in with this like just the overall like it's the underworld like that is the theme of this song and they're getting you know how every single album that they make pretty much has like that theme um not underworld theme but like has a theme of and they incorporate like that sound into the album and that's very much what they did with this one as well um so I think it's a good album. I really, really enjoy it. Um, like I said, the last three to four songs, Doctrine of the Last of Last Things is another great song. The last the last half of this album is very, very good. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more backloaded in my opinion, where most of the good songs are towards the towards the end of the album. However, the first several are also really good. Um there is a, like a interlude track, um, Overlords of the Black Earth. That's a little bit more of the no, sorry. Uh the Pentagramation of Nefrenkov. I can never say these goddamn words. Um, <laughs> there is like an interlude. There's a couple of interlude tracks where they're like a little bit a minute long, and it's just you know kind of setting the pace and giving you a slowdown period to recuperate from just being obliterated by riffs and and pummeling heaviness. Um, but for the most part, it's a very good album. I, like I said, I really really like this album a lot more than their last album and the last two really albums. I started to wonder, like, oh no, is this band going stale? Are they just not, they don't, do not feel it anymore? Are they just pumping out music just to pump out music? Um, but no, I think this album redeems them from that. Um, again, those last albums, they're not bad by any means. And I just don't find myself listening to them very often. Um, I loved At the Gates of See Through. I thought that was a great album. Um, and yeah, so I'm about to show you my, my four favorite albums on record, which I think they're pretty much goes without saying, um, they're classics and what really puts them in that, that, uh, class of being one of the best. So obviously amongst the catacombs, their first album, uh, is, is just iconic. Um, and this is really what like their classic, you know, first album. So this is a real after issue that put out. I don't remember when. Does it say on here? No, it doesn't say on here. Oh, uh, this came out in '98. Uh, printed inner sheet of the lyrics and and liner notes. Uh, pretty much, pretty standard pressing. Um, and yeah, they were on color. So there's a pinwheel 
black it or blue that my god orange and yellow pinwheel splatter um so this one for a long time I've, i i hailed this as being my favorite nile album because it was the one that i was most familiar with it was the one that i i loved but as i got more into their nile universe uh, and listening to their discographies over the last you know like 15 something years um i i I'll show you what my favorite one is. I'll do a raking too. Black Seeds of Vengeance, their second album from 2000, which is crazy. I think this is a 2000 album. It really is. Um, again, a, a relapse reissue that came out within the last, I don't know, last two years or so. Um, just liner notes and lyrics on the printed inner sheet here. I mean, these are pretty standard pressings. There's nothing crazy about them. Uh, simple jackets. The the images aren't bad. They're pretty, with the exception of the lettering, it gets a little bit fuzzy. It doesn't you can't really tell on the camera, but when you have it in person, you'll see it. This pressing is is, I really like this pressing, so I'll take it out of the sleeve. It goes really really well with the album artwork. I guess that's is considered a pinwheel too. Um, these are all still available too, so none of these have sold out. They pressed plenty for people to get. Um, Black Seeds of Vengeance, I feel like, is the one that at one point it did sell out and then was a little bit harder to find. Um, and then they just, they repressed it and put it back in stock quietly. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it doesn't say how many pressings there are on the hype sticker or anything like that. Uh, and then this is admittedly probably my favorite album. So ranking maybe doesn't need to happen since I just said that. This is the one that I find myself craving to want to listen to the most in their dark and shrines. I have this on C I have two copies of this on CD as well. So this is an album where I have several copies of, I love this album. Simply put, um, definitely my favorites. Now this is a double LP, which definitely deserves that a nice gatefold. There you go. I don't think I ever showed this one off. This one is a fairly new recent uh, reissue. Um, I feel like they just pressed this not that long ago. I can't remember when I got it though. It's cool green, like galaxy pressing. It looks awesome. Um, now you're probably wondering, did they make black? I don't think so. I don't think they pressed black pressings for these. I don't know if they did, uh, let me know because I, I didn't see them when I when I ordered these through Relapse. So um, the images on this, not too bad. Not too bad. There's a little bit of a fuzziness to it, but for the most part, it looks good. The back image is, is good. but So yeah, I love this album. Definitely love this album. Um, and then the next one I also love too. Um, and then the rest I need to get on, on vinyl. Um, they're out there. I know they exist. Some of them are a little bit pricey because they haven't been pressed in a while. Maybe they'll be repressed. I don't know. Um, Nuclear Blast takes their time when they reissue certain ones. Um, Annihilation of the Wicked is, again, another one of my favorite ones. The most, one of the most brutal ones that they put out, for sure. Um, again, another double LP. This one is probably simply spectacular in terms of the pressing just that splatter looks awesome um this one is definitely the more brutal sounding nile the you know the first the first two albums the first album is pretty brutal sounding too um i mean they're all brutal but this one has more of that brutal brutality to it that i really enjoy you know what i mean you know this album i don't need to talk about the sound of it but yeah, so I was happy that they just reissued this, I think, last year, um, and people were super pumped about it, man. And so this this the second LP on here is pretty warped. Um, that's just, unfortunately, I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty bowed out. It's got like a dish in the middle. It plays fine. My needle kind of bumps around a little bit, which is not the best when that happens, but... Yeah, I mean, again, this is kind of the, the price that you pay for, for collecting vinyl. And I will say my relapse 
issues. Uh, I get some warped ones from time to time. I don't know why that is. I mean, I live in Florida. There's a lot of factors on why that is. Uh, this probably sat outside of my door waiting for me or in a post box somewhere. Uh, when it was like high humidity, like there's different, different, different factors that can cause the vinyl to warp like that. So yeah, that's the only thing that's, you know, that's the risk that you, that you play with vinyl. People complain about tapes and, and stuff like that, but I've never, I have never gotten a tape that came and didn't sound good or had issues. So, I mean, I, I've had more issues with my vinyl records than anything. And then obviously CD, I've never had any issues unless they come super scratched up and it doesn't play, which most of the time I buy my CDs new anyway. So, all right. So Annihilation of the Wicked. And then I don't have um, the rest on vinyl. Uh, the most, the rest are on CD because, uh, again, they haven't pressed them in a while. Uh, but maybe someday I'll start to search for them. Um, so, yeah, Nile. New album is fantastic. I think just give it a listen, give it a chance. Um, I think they still got a lot left in their tank. Uh, they're still writing really good music. Like I said, the last two albums I wasn't the biggest fan of. I was pretty critical of them, <clears throat> um, but for the most part, I think it's a really it's a really good album. Um, Brian Kingsguard or Kingsland Kingsguard uh, is phenomenal on this album. I think he he added something to it that. Um, yeah, it was just really, really good. I know that he was on the last one as well, but for it seems like they got a chemistry now on this on this one, and it just sounds phenomenal. So um, try it, give it out, give it a shout out if you like it in the comments, um, <clears throat> or let me know what you think of it because um, you always will. Uh, and yeah, I mean, check it out, Napalm Records. I'll link where you can buy it. You can also get it on Amazon if you're one of those people. Just if for whatever reason, if you're out of country and you have Amazon that has it and you don't want to pay for shipping costs because I'm not too sure what how it is with Napalm. Napalm used to be hard to get in in the U.S. and I think they they've got they've like made their own uh, availability in the U.S. now and it's not expensive. So it's a nice pressing. It sounds good. So that's all I have. Happy Monday. Hope you guys have a great week. A couple more videos this week. Um, I've got um, a couple collection updates that I'm gonna do. <clears throat> Man, I need to wake up get my voice cleared, get, get some coffee down in the hatch. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next one.